What's up you guys? It's your boy, BoxBoy33, back with another box open, and today we're opening up a classic box of Photon Shockwave. I use the word classic very loosely. Today we're opening up a relatively old box of Yu-Gi-Oh! We're not talking super classic like Legend of Blue Eyes or Metal Raiders. We're kind of smack in the middle of one of the weirder ages of Yu-Gi-Oh! and we're at Photon Shockwave. Photon Shockwave was one of the debut sets of one of the cooler archetypes in Yu-Gi-Oh! One that I tend to like a lot. It's not even really an archetype, but uh, this set debuted Rescue Rabbit as well as the Evil Sword Logia, and I think Dolka came in this set as well, which gave birth to the deck of Dino Rabbit, which is a pretty cool deck that actually stood the test of time for a while. Rescue Rabbit, of course, being one of the most powerful cards that just recently came back to three. So I'm really excited to crack open this box and kind of just take a blast from the past, talk about some how like these older sets were constructed. More than that, I just want to kind of use this opportunity to have a little discussion on how some of these boxes of Yu-Gi-Oh do not age well. Also, um, ignore the price tag. I didn't just buy this box because it was cheap and it makes content. All right, so crack it open that box of Photon Shockwave. So if people don't remember, if you're a little bit of a newer player of Yu-Gi-Oh, you might not know how old boxes of Yu-Gi-Oh were constructed back in the day. Uh, these boxes are actually constructed a different way. Now we've come to know that boxes tend to have, what, two secret rares, four ultra rares, and all super rares in every pack. Uh, this isn't from that time. These packs of Yu-Gi-Oh were actually constructed in a way that they have uh, one ultimate rare, one secret rare, I think four super rares and two ultra rares in every pack, but also they have ghost rares, which is something they discontinued after a while. I, when's the last time you've seen like an ultimate rare in a core set? Like I'm super excited. Hopefully you're guaranteed an ultimate rare. So like hopefully we can get a good one, but just like most of these cards in this set haven't aged well, as in they've been reprinted already and you can get them in cheaper, cheaper rare. Why can't I open this? Why am I struggling? I need to get fucking scissors. This is ridiculous. All right. We're back. I don't even know what I was talking about, so I'm kind of just going to act like I picked up where I left off. Talking about ultimate rares, when's like the last time you've seen an ultimate rare in a core set? Like, I know ultimate rare is Olympio's favorite rarity. Kind of sad he actually stopped making YouTube videos, so um, yeah, there's that. So Photon Shockwave is a pretty cool box. Um, ooh, wind up bat. It's a good common. Keep that to side. Photon Shockwave, I don't know if it was the greatest set in Yu-Gi-Oh! All I know is that it debuted uh, Dino Rabbit, and that was a damn good set of Yu-Gi-Oh! Oh, Copy Knight is our rare, and just like I said, uh, you don't get- Is that a super rare card? Oh, hey, Dark Smog, that is a super rare. I forgot this card was even printed in this set. Oh, wait, that's not a super rare, that's actually a secret rare. I look really retarded right now. Dark Smog was actually released in Photon Shockwave, go figure. This card went up for a little bit, I think. Uh, once per turn, you can target one monster in your opponent's graveyard. Discard one fiend type monster, banish that target. As you can see, it works with Dark Worlds pretty well. Uh, this got reprinted as a super rare, and now it's worth like less than a dollar. Well, that's our one secret rare for the box, so um, thanks for watching the video, guys. Uh, BoxBoy33 signing out. Well, that was obviously the, the, the climax of this box opening. Uh, you're gonna see me use scissors for the rest of this box opening too, because I somehow can't open these packs. All right, uh, Senior Silver Ninja, Evo Miracle, Mirror Mail, Plasma Blast, Gishki Beast, oh snap. I don't even recognize like some of these cards debuted in this set. Like I'm surprised, kind of giddy that I'm looking at these cards and I didn't even realize some of them debuted. Like I didn't know Gishki Beast debuted in this set. I thought Gishki debuted in like a hidden arsenal set or something like that. Wind up warrior, rab dab dab bop boop. So what exactly am I looking for from this set? Well, I was looking for a secret rare rescue rabbit. That would have been hot to pull, but we we pulled the short straw. I guess ultimate rare galaxy eyes photon dragon's kinda cool. Also the ghost rare galaxy eyes photon dragon, which is another thing I can talk about, is uh, ghost rares in this set. Uh, XYZ territories are rare, and uh, space cyclones are common behind the rare. So ghost rares in uh, core sets actually went through a little bit of a weird kind of, uh, what's it called, like a weird history. They used to have it like for Photon Shockwave and a lot of the other sets they had it where it was the cover card and nothing other. Everybody knew what the ghost rare was going to be, no surprises there. And then, oh look, another windup rabbit, that's cool. Uh, bat, I, I just called this windup rabbit. Fuck me. Windup kitten. I, I keep like cutting myself off for these conversations because I keep pulling stuff, but this is Wind Up Kitten. Cool card. I think this card was actually decent for a while. Uh, it's good in like um, raccoons because it's a level two beast and it's like has a decent effect. Uh, you could also get this in Ultimate Rare, 
which would be a cool ultimate rare, but I don't think you're that likely to pull the same ultra rare and ultimate rare in a box. Um, we'll find out though, I'm sure. Back to ghost rares that I was talking about until I was interrupted. Uh, ghost rares went through a weird history where they were always the cover card of the set. So Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon is in fact the ghost rare of the set, but actually when Judgment of Light debuted, uh, it had like the cover card, like some Utopia jabroni or something like that, but it was actually not the ghost rare of the set. And that was the first time they changed it to a uh, star eater. They actually started making the ghost rares useful cards. So, hey, how about that? Good job, Konami. But yeah, I'm super excited to see what ultimate rare we pull. I haven't seen like a core set ultimate rare in a long time, or I haven't seen one pulled because nobody opens these old piles of crap. I guess I should kind of go a little bit slower through these. We'll go a little bit slower through the next pack because a lot of people might not know what's actually in this piece of garbage set. All right, guys. So let's go really slowly through this pack. Like we're a proper pack opening channel. As you guys all know, I, I, I am. That's totally my reputation. We have a Vanilla, cute. A Laval Dual Slasher. This card was actually played in um, Laval's when you would, that's kind of obvious, isn't it? This card was actually played in Laval's when you use it with the shooting Quasar combo because you could bring this guy out and then uh, he would be your choice of level five. You'd also bring him out in uh, Hyper Librarian. I don't remember why exactly you brought this guy out. Maybe there's some special reason. I think you could bring him back with rekindling. That was the hot part about it. Naturia Marone, Evil Sar Diplo, and our super rare, it's a super rare, Light Serpent, which is if this card is sent from the hand to your graveyard, you can special summon it to the, from the graveyard. This cannot be used as synchro material monster. All right, super rare. That's one of our four super rares, and then Damage Diet and Vylon shit. All right, let's crack open another one, see what we can get. But yeah, uh, I think the main topic abstractly that this video was supposed to be about that I really haven't been keeping to is that um, these videos are, are these uh, sets don't age very well. Like a lot of these cards have been reprinted. Uh, the, the more expensive ones, of course, like Poisonous Winds is still actually, this is a decent tech card when a wind deck always becomes good because um, wind monsters can't be special summoned. It's kind of hot. But uh, some of the more expensive cards always get reprinted. Like even Kage to Kage has been through a couple printings. It's a rare. I don't know how relevant that is, but yeah, you, you know what I'm, I mean. A lot of the high rarity and hard to get stuff in this set has already been reprinted. And it's only really the nostalgic ones or the ones that actually serve a purpose that uh, get reprinted in lower rarity. Like Rescue Rabbit Secret Rare is way prettier than the Super Rare Rescue Rabbit. Everybody's well aware with this. So it'd be nice if you could pull a Secret Rare one of those, but uh, we pull Thunder and Dragon instead. This card's probably been reprinted, but it can't, it hasn't been from what I remember. Two level eight normal monsters. Once per turn, you can detach one XYZ material from this card, destroy all other monsters on the field. I guess it's supposed to be played with blue eyes. Um, that's what I'm pulling with this, or Heratics, because there's a level eight orb dude. I don't know if that, I think that was released in Galactic Overlord, not this set. So there's our two ultra rares for the set. We have reached our quota of ultra rares. Now we got to pull three more supers, I believe, and an ultimate rare. That's what we got in this box. And I'm moving super slow, so I'm gonna turbo speed through. Is there a reason to purchase older boxes? Probably not. I don't think there's anything worthwhile in most of these sets that you can pull uh, that actually will make you your money back. The only reason to buy an old box of Yu-Gi-Oh is to open it for nostalgia purposes. Uh, except if you're opening Star Strike Blast because that set has just been notoriously good for having cards that somehow become good later in the game. I really don't think there's a lot of old sets that are- Oh shit! That's actually really hot. I was thinking I wouldn't pull it, but this is dope. So this is what a ghost rare in a core set looks like. Uh, this is Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. Um, this is actually worth like 20 something bucks or something like that. It's it's worth a pretty penny. I'm happy I pulled this. This is actually fucking sick. I miss these ghost rares. They look sick. I think they look, the, a lot of people say like the synchros or the XYZs look best because they they have the, either the white border or the black border and it looks cool with this, but I like the effect monsters that look with it. I just think it looks really clean. I'm also picking that up real nice on the camera, as you guys can see. That's really cool. So yeah, this is the Ghost Rare Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. And you know what? I gotta take a picture with this thing because I literally just realized I forgot to take a picture of the thumbnail with the box of the set. Shit. But hey, that is pretty cool. Uh, that's really nice, actually, that I pulled that. I wasn't expecting to pull anything that nice, but we did. So that means out of all these packs left here, we have to pull an Ultimate Rare, three more super rares, and then a whole bunch of garbage. I paid 30 bucks for this box, and I made my money back with that. I call this a pretty good day. Maybe that's just me.
Mm, Giga Brilliant, that's a good super rare. This got reprinted though, so it's worth next to nothing. This was like necessary in windups, I think. So that would have been a cool pull back in the day, but we aren't back in the day. I also think those one days of pieces that I've been throwing away are worth like something because I don't, nah, it's been reprinted. Who the fuck am I kidding? I can't believe I pulled a ghost rare. What a good day today is. The only thing that could make this day better is if somebody purchased me Taco Bell. And it just straight up said, hey Gage, you're doing a good job. Let me buy you some Taco Bell. You're fucking welcome, but let's be real or I'm not that special. Evil Tao Weslow. Uh, a lot of people tried this deck, I think, because it had a pretty good card. It got a trap card that was really nice that could like special summon two from your deck or something. I don't know. Said, ah, oh, look at that. So I contradicted my statement from earlier where I said you normally wouldn't pull the ultra rare in the ultimate rare form, but we did it. We're on our way to playing, uh, what's it called? The, the, uh, the, uh, the raccoons. I said it earlier and I fucking forgot. Jesus Christ. I think we pulled just about everything in this box to the point, like, I probably shouldn't even open the rest of the packs. Uh, what am I missing? I think I'm missing, like, another super rare and that's it. Uh, the big pile of commons is starting to intrude on my really pretty pile of hollows. So, um, I'm trying to not let that happen. Another pack. Let's see what we got. Uh, nothing. Cool. Okay. If I pull a super rare before the last few packs here, I'll cut in half the rest of them because there's just genuinely nothing in this second be worth anything. It's not like I'll be cutting a ghost rare. I'm struggling to open these packs, even with scissors. What is my life? Oh shit, we got a corno. Uh, Gem Knight Emerald and, oh, is this the super? This is the super. Uh, Friller Rabka. Another useless card. All right, I think that's it. I don't think I should be pulling any more super rares. Uh, so we got four packs. Let's, let's have some fun. Oh my god, is this, is this real life? I don't, I'm trying aggressively to cut this in half. This is gonna, this isn't probably worth the payoff, but let, I think we should take it from the top, because we can see what cards we cut. Oh shit, we pulled another poisonous ones. I guess that kind of sucks. Photon lead. Icy crypt. Junk defender! Good job defending yourself, you piece of sh**. That was a bad idea. That's probably getting more debris all over the place than what's actually worth it. So let's just turbo through these last few packs. I guess kind of just, I'll close the video while I'm opening these last few packs, but this has kind of been a trip down memory lane. Uh, oh. Is that supposed to happen? I genuinely think you're not supposed to pull three ultra rare cards, but I did somehow. This card was actually, if you guys don't remember, XYZ gift was kind of hyped for a little bit because people thought you would play it in Zodiacs because uh, you get free materials and then you just attach two to draw two. So that's kind of a cool pull, but this box has just been like fucking amazing. The fact that I pulled, okay, three ultra rares, which you're only supposed to pull two, I think, um, but also the ghost rare, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this purchase. This has just definitely been worth it. Now imagine how upset I would have been if I would have cut that pack in half like I did that other one. I would have been genuinely upset. All right, and the last pack of the Photon Shockwave box, this little trip from the past, which has been actually extremely lucrative, as you can see. Uh, there's gonna be nothing in this pack, I guarantee it, and uh, your boy was right. But um, yeah, let's kinda, I'll take a moment, I'll go through all these, let me organize them and I'll show you guys exactly what we got. All right, so for the pools that we got here, let me go over them real quick. Kind of give you guys a little history lessons on the ones that I can, that I am knowledgeable about. We pulled Evil Ha Westlow, which is an okay super rare card. I think this is still worth just a couple bucks because it's never been reprinted. Uh, number 20, Giga Brilliant. Also a really important super rare card from back in the day. This card's great. Uh, I think the Money Chase card of the set is Wind Up Zen Mains, which is the secret rare. Uh, it was over $100 at that point. Uh, one of the best uh, rank threes in the game and now it's worth less than 50 cents because it's been reprinted in super rare and XYZ's got way better. Uh, Light Serpent, I don't even know if that's card's decent, and for La Roca, I, okay, the thing is, I don't think these ratios were correct for this box. I think you're supposed to pull five supers and then two ultras, but somehow we got three ultras in the form of Thunder End Dragon, Wind Up Kitten, and XYZ Gift. I'm not complaining, because that's dope, uh, and it makes for a great video where I can say this was a misprinted box, Ding, ding, ding. But um, that's pretty cool. This card's cool. This card's cool. This card's okay. But yeah, cool. Uh, and then Wind Up Kitten as our ultimate rare. Remember, you get one ultimate rare per core set box back in the day here. This is a pretty cool pull. Uh, ultimate rare Wind Up Kitten sometimes goes up in price. I forget why. 
Uh, the Secret Rare Dark Smog, which uh, as I said before, has already been printed in Super Rare now. So it's not worth anything, but this is cool. We pulled this from our first pack. And then for the big card that we pulled, oh, we did pull, in fact, the Ghost Rare Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon. Fucking really sick pull. I expected this video to be like how these sets don't age well, but somehow I've kind of just contradicted myself by saying this is actually a really dope box that I pulled. Uh, that's the box opening, and I guess what we can learn from this is um, sometimes you, you make your money back from these shitty boxes. Thanks for watching the video. If you guys liked the video, be sure to like, comment, definitely subscribe, uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Boxboy33 signing out. Deuces. <laughs>